Oh, there it is. <laughs> I preempted already. Anyways, hi, welcome and joining NFP Live with um, our UT nursing students. Thank you so much for joining in. We are so glad that you're participating with us. Um, a little bit about us. Uh, we are a nurse family partnership program here at the Children's Shelter. And our program provides first time moms with in-home registered nurse home visits. Right now it's virtual, of course, because COVID, but God willing, soon we'll be back into those homes. Um, we do a lot of different services here at TCS. We have counseling, we have father programs, we have parenting classes. I mean, if you're looking to foster to adopt or foster, I mean, we've got it. Um, but we had started this program and doing this collaboration with the UT Health Nursing students, um, providing them um, a way to present program materials that they've been working really hard on this semester, as well as um, getting it out to the public because it's important for you to know a lot of the information that they're giving us. Uh, we want to welcome our nursing students in, and uh, they're going to be teaching us today on newborn bathing and skin care. So enjoy the presentation, and I'll see you when they finish. Sorry, there's a technical display. Technical. This one? All right. There? All right, here we go. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Amy, and I'm going to be introducing what we're going to be doing today. So um, we're from UT Health San Antonio, specifically the School of Nursing. And today we're going to be teaching you guys about newborn bathing, um, how to um, take care of their skin and um, their cord. Hello, so let's move to the next slide. I just... All right, so the objectives of the training um, after today, new moms will be able to do the sponge in a tub bath. You'll know what kind of products to use to um, care for your newborn skin. And they're going to tell you the right ways to um, do the skin care and uh, precautions and risks that you need to be aware of. Okay, well, hi, you guys. Um, I'm going to be um, talking to you about newborn bathing. Okay, so a couple of things you need to know about newborn bathing, like how often do you need to do it? Well, you really only need to do it two to three times a week. And the reason for that um, is because babies have natural oils on their skin. And if you're washing them once a day, you're going to take off all of that natural oil and it's going to dry out their skin. So that's why you only do it two to three times a week. Um, you can easily store all of your baby's bath supplies in either a plastic bag or just one container just so that you have all of your supplies together and you don't have to, um, you know, to have trouble finding them um, if they're all over the place. Um, one thing about bathing is that you never want to leave the baby alone at any time during the bath, whether it's during a sponge bath or a tub bath, just because accidents can happen um, in an instant when they're left alone. Um, the best, the easiest way to learn about bathing is either to like watch a video or to have somebody demonstrate it for you. Um, and again, like I said earlier, there's two types of baths you can give your baby, and it's a sponge bath or a tub bath. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how you should perform a sponge bath. Um, so what's really interesting about a sponge bath is that you can do them in a lot of different places. You can do it in a kitchen or bathroom sink that's clean. You can do it even in just a large bowl. You can do it on top of a plastic dish pan or you can buy a bath basin like in the picture on the bottom right corner. Um, when you're bathing them, it's recommended that you do a sponge bath for the first two weeks or until their umbilical cord falls off. And the reason for that is for the first two, when before the cord falls off, 
um, you want to try and keep it as dry as possible. So with a sponge bath, it's easier to keep it dry. So you do want to have um, an organized approach to bathing your baby. You want to try and start from head to toe. Um, and you want to start with the face and then finishing with like the groin and the, um, the bum, which is called the perineal area. Um, you do not want to use soap on your baby's face. That's really important. Um, so before you begin bathing, you want to test the water. You want to test it with your elbow or your forearm to make sure that it's not too hot and it's not too cold. So you want to keep it around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You can use a temperature if you want to be really exact, or you can just test it with your elbow or your forearm. So when you do a sponge bath, you can do it two ways. You can swaddle your baby while you're bathing and just expose the area that you want to clean and then wrap it back up. Or you can just leave your baby's diaper on and leave everything else exposed, which is probably a little bit easier. Um, so let's say, let's say you start bathing your baby. When you, you want to start with the face, again, you don't want to put any soap on it. You can use a washcloth or you can use cotton balls to clean out the eyes. So what's important about cleaning the eyes is when you wet the washcloth, you would wipe from the inner to the outer. And then you would do a different part of the washcloth and clean the other eye. The reason for that is because if the baby happens to have an infection or any germs in one eye, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to bring it to the other eye. So then you would wipe the mouth and the chin, which you actually want to do every time they feed, but you want to do it, of course, during the bath. After the mouth and chin, you want to go to the ears and wash them gently. Don't use a cotton swab to clean inside the ear because you can actually damage the eardrum and the ear canal. So next, now you can start using soap. We're going to move down to the neck. You want to be careful um, about cleaning in the skin folds, especially in the neck, or I know some chunky babies can have like some rolls on their arms or their thighs. You really want to clean those skin folds because that's where bacteria can build up. Um, so you really want to make sure you clean it. So next you're going to move down to like their chest area and their arms and their belly. Again, you want to make sure and try to keep that cord dry. So once you've cleaned their arms and their legs, um, you want to move, go ahead and remove the diaper and you're going to clean the groin area. So with little girls, sometimes you can find white or pinkish discharge. Don't panic. That's normal. It's like a little girl's kind of first period. So don't panic when you see that. You want to gently clean um, the labia from front to back. You, there's no need to like scrub it roughly. So just gently wash it. Now for little boys, if they're uncircumcised, you can clean the, I'm sorry, you can clean the penis with water and soap. Do not pull back the foreskin because that's actually going to damage, um, that's going to damage that. So with an uncircumcised boy, you don't want to use soap. Just rinse water over the circumcision site. Um, and don't rub it, just rinse the water over it. Um, so once you've washed all of your baby, you know, you can put their di a clean diaper on and dry them up. And last thing you wanna wash is their head. Um, so you would hold them in a football position, slightly slanted down. So when you rinse their head, you're not gonna get water and soap all up in their face. Um, so again, once you've washed them and you've dried them, you can dress them to make sure that they don't um, get cold and then eventually have hypothermia. And then after that, you've finished, you've completed a sponge bath for your baby. So next, Jamie is going to teach you how to perform a tub bath. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about how to give a tub bath. And the important point here is to make sure that you do not give a tub bath until the um, cord has fallen off or if um, you have a little boy and he has a circumcision, you want to make sure you don't give it until it's healed. That's um, the main point here. So a tub bath is almost like a sponge bath. It can be um, done in the same areas. You can use a plastic dish pan, um, a clean bathroom or a kitchen sink or a large bowl. They also have really fancy things you can get online. They're a little expensive. If you want to get one, you can. You just look up infant tub bath. It'll come up. But really, it's not necessary. You can just use a sink. 
Um, if you are going to use a bathroom or the kitchen sink, it's important you face the faucet away from them because accidental burns can happen. It's not occasional, but it's just a good rule of thumb to have because accidents happen. So whenever you're bathing the baby, you only want to use three to four inches of water. Um, as for the sponge bath, you don't want to look away. So it, they're slippery. And if you look away for a second, they can like slide in. So it's important to only use a little bit of water that way, just in case they slide a little bit, you know, they don't completely submerge their head or anything. Um, also, since they are slippery, you can put a washcloth at the bottom of the sink or the tub, whichever one you're using, and it'll help them from slipping as well. And whenever you are placing the baby into the sink or the bowl, whichever one you're going to use, you want to use the cradle position. So whenever you're cradling your baby, their head is by your elbow and then you're holding them at their thigh. So when you place them in there and you're washing them, you can continue to hold them like that. But sometimes that's a little bit more difficult. So an alternative is like you see in the picture here, you can use your forearm here to support their head and hold their shoulder um, with your hand. And that's a little bit easier. But um, some people, since they are slippery, they will buy a tube sock, a tube sock, and then they can um, cut finger holes in it, and that just helps the baby um, preventing from slipping as well. It's not necessary, only if you find yourself having a hard time with it. So um, when you're washing them, it's pretty much how the sponge bath is, except they're going to be submerged in water. So you don't have to do one part at a time. Um, you can use your hand or a washcloth. As long as you're gentle, you just don't want to be vigorously scrubbing their skin hard. And um, lastly, whenever you are done bathing them and you want to do their backside, you want to put your um, hand on their chest and you'll use your thumb under the arm that's closest to you. And then with your forearm that's supporting them, you'll go ahead and lift them up and then you'll be able to clean the, their backside. And then when you put them down, you can um, bring them out, dry them off really well, wrap them up. And you don't want to wash their face or their head while you're doing the tub bath. You want to do it like you would when you are doing the sponge bath. So you'll do that separately, actually. And you'll just bring them out, dry them up, and then you'll do that separately. And that's it for a tub bath. It's pretty simple, um, a little bit different from a sponge bath. But the main point to take away is that you don't want to do a tub bath until the cord has fallen off or the circumcision has healed. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about some skin care. Hi, I'm Tracy, and I'm going to be talking about skin care. So after you bathe your baby, or in general, you want to keep your um, baby's skin hydrated and soft and smooth because our skin is different from theirs, and they can um, they can be very dry easily and um, get get like breakage on their skin. So you want to keep their moisture. Um, so for example, like after you uh, change their diaper, you want to put petroleum jelly on their diaper area if they have any rash or anything, so they, so that you can protect their skin barrier. And then you also want to apply like fragrance-free hypoallergenic moisturizer um, immediately immediately after bathing them to prevent dry skin. And one thing that you should do is always uh, wash your hands so you can prevent germs and infection on your baby skin. And there are some there's a lot of products in the stores that you can get to, such as Aquaphor or Aveeno, um, but there are plenty of other products too that you can look at. And now I'm going to hand it over to Cheyenne, and she's going to talk about normal newborn skin um, findings. All right. Hello, guys. So don't be afraid to ask questions. We'll be able to answer them at the end, okay? So first, we're going to talk about vernix. Like I said, we're talking about normal newborn skin care findings, okay? So... <clears throat> If your baby is premature, their skin is going to be more thin and transparent, and you'll be able to see the veins across their belly. In a full-term newborn, the skin is more opaque or non-transparent because of the fat that's on their bodies. Um, so like you can see in the picture, 
that's what vernix looks like. It's like a white cheese-like substance, which is protective for the newborn. It's completely normal, so you don't have to worry about it. You'll find that it really likes to be in the creases. So like Caroline said, um, if they have rolls in their arms or on their neck and their armpits, um, you'll find it all those places. Um, now we're going to talk about lanugo. So lanugo is also a normal newborn finding. Um, it's found it's soft hair um, found all over the newborn. So you'll be able to see it like in their face or in their body, on their arms and their legs. Um, and then you can also find it on the ears. The places you won't see it would be like on the palms of their hands or on the soles of their feet. Um, and just remember with vernix, um, you don't have to scrub it off. Like I said, it's completely normal. And with lanugo, um, it's, the hair will fall off on its own. So you don't have to worry about that as well. And next we're going to talk about some tips for skin care. Okay, so we made this power, this slide um, just to like a, a repeat of what you guys just like all learned. Um, so with bathing, um, again, make sure to start with the cleanest part of the body and um, and with the dirtiest part of the body. So you want to start with their eyes, their face, um, and their head. And you want to move down to their chest, their arms, and then their legs. And you want to make sure you wash the groin area last. Um, and remember, it's um, best to just wash them two to three times a week um, because their skin is very sensitive. You don't want to strip their natural oils. Um, and I also want to add, um, if you have a baby boy and he has a circumcision, um, make sure like with the, with the diaper, it, it's not loose and it's firm fitting because you don't want friction against um, the circumcision. Um, and you want to make sure um, the diaper area is always clean and dry so um, to prevent any diaper rashes. So you want to make sure to change um, their diapers frequently, keep the perineal area, which is just the area above um, their private part. Um, you can wash it with warm water or wipes um, and make sure to do front to back. You don't want to bring any bacteria from the rectal area to the front. Um, and if they do have a diaper rash, you can use petroleum jelly, antifungal, mild corticosteroid cream, uh, zinc oxide based cream. And um, I think we are going to be talking about um, how to take care of your baby's umbilical cord next. So I'm going to hand it to Brittany. So we're going to be talking about how to care for your newborn's umbilical cord or the umbilical stump. Okay. So the umbilical cord or umbilical stump is really the belly button. Um, as it's been um, said before, you really wanna keep this area as dry as possible. It's okay if it does get a little wet, it just makes it more of a risk for infection. So really do your best to keep it as dry as possible until it falls off. Um, while the newborn has an umbilical stump, you want to fold the diaper underneath it so that it's not tugging or pulling on it. This will prevent tearing of the umbilical stump from the newborn's um, abdomen, which can cause bleeding and obviously discomfort. Um, in order to keep this area dry, you want to stick to a sponge bath until the stump falls off. That's going to be about 10 to 14 days or about two weeks. Um, allow the cord to fall off on its own. So there's a lot of old um, ideas about putting like rubbing alcohol on the stump to dry it out. That is not recommended. Um, so just let it dry out on its own. Keep it as dry as possible. It should fall off in about two weeks. It's going to look dark and dry, kind of crusty. You can use a Q-tip to clean around the stump, but you shouldn't need to do that frequently. Only if like urine or feces get onto the stump, um, then you would obviously want to clean it, but you still want to do it 
with very little um, like water. Um, notify the provider or your child's pediatrician if you notice any signs of infection. These are going to be like a moist cord, cord um, lasting like longer than two weeks, a foul odor coming from the stump, any bleeding, or if you see any drainage that's kind of pus-like, um, or localized heat around the umbilical stump or pain that the infant is experiencing upon like touching the stump. Those are all signs that there's something abnormal going on with the stump and you should notify the child's pediatrician. As you can see on the side, there is a picture of a normal umbilical stump. This is okay, this is what it should look like. Slightly abnormal is the middle one. It's gonna have some drainage going on. You should monitor that, make sure that you're you know, paying attention to what's going on and notify the provider if it's worsening. And then the last one's abnormal. Um, and that's a definite concern and the pediatrician should be notified immediately. So I'm gonna hand it back off to Amy and she's gonna finish up for us. Hi guys, so uh, we made this power, this slide, sorry. <laughs> um, I know we just like dumped a bunch of information on you. So we wanna give you guys some key points to remember. Um, so number one, always make sure to wash your hands before touching your baby. You know, we touch so many things throughout the day and we can just like carry bacteria with us. Um, so with newborn bathing, um, like we said multiple times, you wanna make sure to just wash them two to three times. Um, it's not important to wash them every day. It's most important to keep their moisture because they're sensitive. Um, don't leave your baby unattended. Um, to prevent any accidents from happening. Um, and if your baby's cord hasn't fallen off or you have a little boy that has circumcision, um, you need to wait for it to be healed. Um, so you wanna use a sponge bath rather than a tub bath. Um, with newborn skin, um, like Cheyenne was saying, um, that white cheesy stuff on their skin is normal. Um, you don't need to like sit there and scrub it off. It's actually good for them. Um, it's recommended to use hypoallergenic, non-fragrant moisturizers for your baby. Um, they can be really sensitive to things that are fragrant. And with the cord care, keep it dry um, so you can prevent infection. And um, one thing you can do is fold the diaper down um, below the umbilical cord to prevent friction or irritation, irritation to it um, to prevent infection. So I think that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, I don't know how to look at the chat box. There's no chat box? There is. But oh, okay. Um, well, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm sure there's a chat box somewhere that we can answer them later on for you guys. Um, but thank you for listening and thank you for having us. Thank you all so much for joining us. Again, these nurses, round of applause, have done an amazing job in preparing this for you all. Um, we do encourage comments. I know most of you will probably watch this post, uh, and but we still want comments because we can share those with them. Um, if we have any concerns or questions, then we can also shoot them on over to them. Um, and, or if the questions are too much, then we also have their professor as well who can um, answer those for us. Uh, remember, in two weeks from now, we will have um, another group of nurses who will be teaching on danger signs of pregnancy. And we are super proud to host that here at the Children's Shelter. We are a family of services providing wraparound services to all of Bear County and beyond. Um, we want to take that time to thank you for continuing to follow us. And uh, y'all have a very blessed day. All right. Thank you. Oh, hashtag lamb fam. <laughs> <laughs>